Does God's will always happen in relationships? That's what we're going to talk about in this episode. Hey everybody, I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com, a place where we apply the Bible to your life. So this question about God's will is really theological. So what I'm going to do in this video is do the first part as a theological explanation of God's will in general, and then in the last part, I'm going to apply the truths we just covered and apply them to relationships. So it's really important when we're talking about God's will to understand that the Bible actually refers to God's will in two ways. There's a lot of confusion when the will of God comes up because some people emphasize the first type of God's will that can never be broken, which is God's sovereign will. And then the next group of people often emphasized the second type of God's will, which is his prescribed will or his will of commands. So some people get frustrated when you say God's will always happens because there's sin and hurt and pain in the world and God would never will those things to happen. Other people get upset because they see the verses in the Bible that say whatever God wants to happen is going to happen. And they're right. And both are right, really. It really depends on what you mean by God's will. So let's dive in and study what the Bible really says here. The first type of God's will mentioned in Scripture is God's sovereign will. What I mean by sovereignty is that God has the power and the ability to plan and accomplish whatever he wants to. If you aren't sovereign and you can't do what you want, when you want, or why you want, you're not God. You know, sovereignty is a prerequisite for divinity. God is God because he can do whatever he wants and he has the power to do whatever he wants. So this type of will, God's sovereign will, always happens. This hit, When he plans something and he wants something to occur, it always happens. It's an impossibility for it not to occur. For example, in Ephesians 1 verse 11, it says, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. You really want to zero in on those words that God works all things according to the counsel of his will. All things include your salvation, your sanctification, your justification, and every molecule that has ever existed from the beginning of time, God has predetermined what's going to happen in that he's in control of it. I say predetermined in that everything that happens happens because God either directly causes it or allows it. Even when Satan is, you know, on the move and acting and doing things that are displeasing to God, when you look at scripture, Satan has to ask God to do anything that he does. For example, in Luke 22:31, Satan has to ask God to sift Peter like wheat. And if you read Job chapter 1, you see that uh, Satan has to get God's permission to attack Job. So even when there's sinful things that are occurring, God doesn't cause those things, but he does allow them. If, he, if we subtract that truth, you're saying that there's things in this world that can overpower God. If you neglect this first type of God's will, his sovereign will, you're saying that there are causes in the world that are greater than God's power, that reality is not caused by God, it's caused by these other outside factors that God can't do anything about, and you're undercutting the power of God. One of the best examples to see that God is sovereign and man is free. You know, a lot of people get upset when you hear about the sovereignty of God because then they make this conclusion, well, if God is sovereign, man must not be free to do what he wants. But nowhere in this video have I said that and nowhere in the Bible does it say that. God is completely sovereign and man is totally free to act how he wants to act. One of the best places to see that is in Acts 2 verse 23. And in this passage, 
we see that the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was actually predetermined before humans were ever created. And yet, as you read the story, you know that humans were making free and sinful choices that led to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So you have A, yes, God predetermined and planned that Christ was crucified, and B, people freely chose to crucify Jesus. And that's exactly what the Bible says in Acts 2.23. It says, This man, Jesus, was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. You have both truths there. And I know this sounds like double talk and it can be confusing, but we should expect some of that when we're talking about the very power of God. His ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And if we could completely understand God and wrap him up in a little box, that would be a bad thing because it would be a sign that we're creating God in our head because we can fully understand him. If you fully understand the God that you believe in, you probably don't believe in the true God of the Bible because he created you and he's greater than you and greater than me. So I say all of that because God is sovereign. And when his sovereign will, when we're talking about God's sovereign will, that will always happens. Now the second type of God's will that we see in scripture does not always happen. So what I refer to this will as is God's prescribed will. Some refer to this as God's will of command. I like the word prescribed because God has given humans a uh, instructions and recommendations on how to live their life. Like a doctor who gives a prescription to his patients, God has given us his word and his commands to teach us the best way to live. He has a will for our life that is the best possible way for us to live, but he gives us the option to obey or disobey those commands, to obey or disobey his will for our life in this sense. So you can see this all over scripture, but here's just a few examples. In Luke 7 verse 30, it says, But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. So right there you can see that the Pharisees rejected the purpose of God for them. They rejected the will of God. Does that mean that they did something contrary to God's power and sovereignty? No, it means that they sinned and they disobeyed what God wanted them, wanted them to do. It says in Matthew 7 verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Or for example, in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you will abstain from sexual immorality. Or if you go over to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So here we can see that the will of God is the word of God. When God gives you the word and gives us the word and tells us how to live, God is giving us his will for our life. He wants us to live this certain way. But as we all know, God has given us the option to obey or disobey God. So the point is, God's prescribed will is not always uh, followed. It doesn't always happen. It doesn't always prevail. That's why sin, hurt, anger, frustrations, pain, broken relationships, all of those things exist. But because he gave people the option to follow or not follow his prescribed will. So God's sovereign will and God's prescribed will work together. The end outcome of everything that we do is predetermined by God. So we have free choices, but God brings about his sovereign will through the free choices of human beings. For example, it says in Proverbs 16, verse 33, it says, The lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. In other words, you can throw the dice yourself, but the outcome of your actions is in God's control. Another way to put it is, even when you sin, God is in control. Sin doesn't mean that we are more powerful than God. Just because we can do things that God doesn't want, doesn't mean that we are stronger than God. Even when we sin, 
God is still in control of everything that's happening in our life. He still he allows things to happen. He's allowing us to do what we want, but that doesn't mean God isn't ultimately still in control of the details of our life. So the third thing we want to do now is come back to our original question that we talked about in the beginning of this video, which is, does God's will always happen in relationships? And to answer this part of the of the video and of the question, we want to we want to just take what we just learned about God's sovereign will and his prescribed will and apply these biblical truths to this question about relationships. So to do that, I want to just read from the article I wrote on this same topic because I want to say it in the right way. Theology, you know, you want to get the words right. So if you want to read the article I wrote, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. But let me just read the last part of that article so we can kind of get the, the, the full takeaway here. I say many times people want to know if God's will always happens in relationships because they want to know if they can miss out on something good in relationships that God wanted for them. The answer to that is yes. Anytime you sin, you are missing out on something good God has for you. However, we can take this too far and start assuming that even when we are obeying God's word, we will miss God's will. This is impossible. If you do your best to obey God's will, that's all you can do. The rest is in God's control. You are required to obey God's prescribed will through being filled with the Spirit and being sanctified. God is responsible for His sovereign will. So cut through all the confusions that arise in relationships by doing your best to apply the Word of God to your relationships. That's God's will for you. Love God and love people. Don't worry about what God does or does not have planned for you in specific ways in relationships. We don't know if he plans for you to be with this person or that person, to be married this year or never. What we do know is that God has good planned for you. When you obey God's will, you will experience God's goodness. So, you know, again, to cut to the heart of why we ask these questions, we want to know, can I miss what God has for me. And again, every time we sin, we're missing out on good, but God is ultimately still in control and his grace overrules our sin when we come back to him and obey him. So we need to focus on God's prescribed will. We need to look at the word of God and see what it says and obey it. And when we do that, we're not going to miss the will of God for our life. And we can take comfort in God's sovereign will. We can trust that when we obey God, God's going to take care of God's plan. God's going to fulfill his good will for our lives. Well, I hope this video benefited you and perhaps you learned something new. And if you did, give us a thumbs up. Maybe even share this video with your community on social media. And leave us a comment in the comment section. I'll definitely do my best to answer any follow-up questions that you might have. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider hitting that subscribe button. We're making new videos every week, just like this one, about singleness, Christian relationships, marriage, how to know God's will for your life, how to honor Him, and just all these types of questions about modern life as we apply God's eternal truth to the questions that we all have. Well, thanks for watching, and God bless.